Hi, I'm Gene Cavassas. I'm going to show you how to build this simple laser cutter enclosure that is so easy to build using some simple shelving material and a piece of plastic that I ordered from a local supplier. So stay tuned. So we're going to start out by buying some real simple shelving material that comes in 8 foot and 4 foot sheets that is 15 and 3 quarters inch wide three quarters of an inch thick and has a white laminate on the front and the back. It's basically shelving material. It's a hardboard or a particle board material, but it'll work perfect for this project because you have to do very little cutting on it. Now I recommend you pick up the product that has the white edging already on it. I didn't, so I had to put the white edging on it and that turned into a bigger hassle than it's worth. So I'd recommend going the other way. So basically, you're going to take the two boards, the eight foot piece, and you're going to cut that into two pieces, 30 and a half inches. After you've cut those, you're going to cut one more piece, 24 inches. Now moving down to the four foot piece, you're going to cut that in half at 24 inches. Now the last piece that's 24 inches, you're going to slice that down the center at eight inches. Now there's going to be a couple pieces of scrap material, but hold on to that for later because we're going to use that as well. Plus, one piece of MDF in a 2 by 4 foot piece that I can cut to use as the bottom, and that's going to leave me some scrap on that as well. I want to make sure I wear safety glasses and ear protection. Okay, now we're ready to do it again. Another thought that I had too was, and this isn't something you absolutely have to do, but I think I'm going to want to, is I'm going to use the saw to just skim the face of this white off so that when I glue up the corners, I'm gluing the particle board to particle board because this surface is a little slick and I'm concerned that it would stick. Depending on the glue you use could make the difference, but I don't want to mess up and I'm going to try it that way. You could also probably even just use it by either masking it off and sanding it or maybe even just running like a wood chisel down to see if you could clean it up. But I think I'll just try the table saw and just do a very clean cut that way. So much for a clean cut. I think I would recommend bypassing this and just glue the corners together. So now we have all the basic pieces cut. The, the two sides, the front that's cut at 8 inches by 24, and then the top and the back that are both cut at 24 inches by the 15 and 3 quarter inch wide as well. So now that these grooved out edges are done and I went a little wild on the back and I cut two edges I didn't need so I'm gonna probably not worry about those. So now the next thing that I want to do is on the sides I want to cut some holes in this so that we can put the power, the um, blower, and any of the cables that need to go in. So I'm gonna start that now.
But now I'm going to start putting the pieces together. Now one of the things I picked up and I've never tried out before is what's called corner mate. And I picked these up on Amazon and they're basically a spring loaded clamps for the corners and I think those will help me to hold this together while I get it glued up. I'm also going to use the Gorilla Glue Ultimate wood glue and according to it it sets up in 15 minutes so it's a little different than using the tight bond so I'm going to give this a try as well and see how that does now something else I'm going to use but you don't have to would be I'm going to use an air stapler and also help to hold it into place and make sure everything's square as I'm doing this get this piece glued up. Okay, well that, that's not too bad. Together like that, I'm going to set a, a staple here. Needs to be just like You don't have to do that and in fact I found another way that I'm going to be using and that is I picked up some little angle clips very small black um, clips they come with screws I'm going to set those into the inside corners to help strengthen them and make them stronger and you'll see how that goes as well so let's get started Now that the sides are done, I'm going to install the top, but I'm going to put some through bolts on that so that if I need to remove the top at any time, I can do that. I'm now going to use some of that scrap wood that we had left over by cutting that into one inch strips and putting that in the front and the top about a quarter inch in. This is going to allow me to rest the plastic window in that place. The mistake I made with using the staple gun was I used a little bit too long of staple and you could see little divots on the side of it when I put those one inch strips in. So on the sides where I drilled the holes for power to go in, I picked up some of these little inserts that can help to keep it organized and you know keep the the smoke from coming out of there unfortunately when I drilled those holes I drilled them just a little too loose so they're a little sloppy so I'm gonna wrap a little tape around those and pop them in and that's gonna work just fine okay so now basically we have a big box we're gonna vacuum it out clean it up and get it ready for finish I'm gonna start out and test out this trim see how well it works going on and I'm going to try it with a heat gun and they also 
sent these little white gloves. They gave me these gloves that looks like I should be in a hamburger helper commercial. Wait, let's give this a try. Very good, Jane. That's, that's not very good at all. Or that. And then here, I picked up one of these little fans. Uh, it's actually duct, a ductwork fan, but it had a little better power than just using, say, a uh, fan motor for a computer. So I'm gonna run this in here as well. Now I'll put a link down below to all of the products and the materials used in this video, but also, YouTube has now started offering links down in the bottom here. You can click on that and see all the materials and the links to shop directly from that. Kind of cool. Okay, so now I have the basic box built. And I've put this edging around it. This, this really was not easy or I was doing it the complete wrong way. I mean, it irons on or heats on, this melts in, it bites fantastic. But trimming that edging out and making it not tear it up or look terrible was almost impossible. After I finished, I had to come back and touch it up, the edging up with some white paint just to make it look better. So, in hindsight, I highly recommend when you buy this material, buy the shelving material that comes with the white edging on it already. I didn't do that. Mine had the raw edge. And if you buy it with the finished edging, the only thing you've got to mess with is the end cuts. And you could either paint that or buy, go ahead and go with this same method, but you would have a lot less to have to work with. You know, basically here and here. So that's going to be a big difference. So use all the screw-ups I did as a learning tool and build yours in the most simple, easy way. Um, I've got the fan mounted in there ready to go. Um, and next I think I'm going to put a LED light inside of this. So I'll go ahead and screw that down into there and then I can put the top on and then put the hinge pieces on. It works, and then I can even uh, kind of adjust that more downward like that. All right, that tightens that up good. Okay, so now what we need to do is install the top on that, which is ready to go, been pre-fit. All I have to do is set it up into place. But before I do that, I also have ordered for the front of this a plastic shield that is this. This still has the paper on it, but you can see it's the corner. It is that laser protective orange. And I had ordered this piece and I had it bent up by one of the local plastic companies for me and it ran me right around $50. And I'll put a link to this company, but I'm sure in your area you can find the exact same company that can do the exact same thing for you. If you don't want to go the expense of having one built or bent up like this, which I like because I think it just gives me more area of view. You could build this all the way up and just put a straight piece of plastic lid on top. It'd be a cheaper, easier way to go, but I kind of like this look. I picked up a stainless steel 24 inch piano hinge that I'll be mounting on the top and the plastic. Now I'm a little scared of drilling the plastic, but I'm just going to have to be careful, take my time, and I'm sure it's going to work out fine. So I'm going to get started on this. Oh, 
Okay, so now I've bent up this, and it's going to be a basic lift type latch that I'm going to fit under this so that I can just grab it and lift it up like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a row of double stick tape, two-sided tape down on this and apply it to the back side of this. Yeah. Okay, I like that. That can work. Now we can put the stuff in. Also, bending up a metal handle for the front of that window, but you know, you don't have to do that. You could also just cut a strip of wood and screw that on from behind or even just buy like a cabinet handle and put on it. But I liked having that full length. I actually drilled another extra hole up higher so that when you have the laser sitting at a high level, you can easily plug that in too. Take this, put those there, and set that cap on. So anyway, I'm real happy with the way the enclosure turned out and I think I'll use this much easier and I'll like it a lot better than that thing that felt more like a one of those boxes they deliver pizza in. You gotta unzip it. It's kind of a soft enclosed box and you know it works fine if that's what you want it for but I wanted something a little more stable and I think this will work. Thanks for the pizza dad. Sure. So anyway Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.